output. So um, can I call you Martin? I prefer Marty, actually. <laughs> um, okay, well, hi, Martin. Uh, Marty, um, I'm Vanessa. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> Vanessa. You, sorry, I'm ruining your interview. <laughs> No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I've only been sitting here practicing for like hours. <laughs> no, no. Um, I kid. Um, anyway, um, I'm Vanessa from Mother of Movies, um, and I'm really happy to be talking to you today. Awesome, awesome. Great to be speaking to you. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say I'm um, actually in Moreton Bay, uh, where parts of your directorial feature debut, Great White, was filmed. Um, what yeah. made you choose to make the movie here? Well, I think what I was trying to do with the film was, uh, I think, tropical Queensland or northern Queensland, we were trying to get that sense of epic beauty and beguiling beauty um, and then sort of juxtapose that with, you know, uh, what's lurking below in the water and the mysteries of the ocean and stuff. So I think Queensland has that tropical, mysterious look about it um, and I think that, that just worked really well for the script. Yeah, it sure did. Um, there was some spectacular cinematography featured in the film. Um, awesome. Australia has some really great animal creature feature horror films uh, like The Reef, Dog Shoulders, Blackwater. Um, what made you want to reinforce that everything in Australia wants to kill you? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's rich territory, isn't it? You know, with these, with these uh, types of dangers that people perceive about Australia um so I guess it was <clears throat> I, I guess it's just the opportunity of the script and so being my first time I, I embraced that and it, it could have been spiders it could have been crocodiles um but in this occasion it was sharks so um yeah I was just excited to be given the opportunity and really grateful for that yeah um I love a shark movie anyway so I was I was right in there uh, waiting awesome. for it um, I read somewhere, I don't know if this is true or not, but um, while you're working on a movie called Under the Lighthouse, uh, that you did something very Australian, and that was bribing some road workers with beer. <laughs> um, yeah, I I was, wanted, it was crazy, yeah. I just wanted to know what type of beer did you choose, and uh, were there any incidents of bribery while you're working on Great White? Um, on the Under the Lighthouse dancing, I think what I happened was I was, dry, I was a runner, so I was driving Nomi Watts around on the set and we were late for whatever reason. And I drove over there. Uh, they'd done re the road, which of course causes major dramas. And all these guys looked like they were just out of the, um, uh, you know, like a bikey club. And I was a young kid. So I was very scared that they were going, they wanted to, the, the rumor was they were going to, they were going to uh, kill me basically. So I, took my life in my own hands and bought, I think it was EMU Export or whatever it was at the time and and just um, put a whole carton down on the side of the road and the guy said, look, there's a guy down there want to kill you. And I was like, okay, I'll just leave it here. And then the carton was gone and I never heard from him again. So it does work. Um, <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> but no, I didn't have to do that on Great White, which was nice. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Back to talking about Great White. Um, I've yeah. actually seen the film. Um, I thought it was awesome. Um, oh, without spoiling you. anything, though, uh, I love um, a survivalist type horror film uh, when the characters are forced into isolation against the elements and facing off a threat. Uh, it's fun to watch the characters and, and who's going to crack first. Yeah. Um, was that a hard thing to capture? I think it was. It was something we really focused on because we knew we had long periods on the raft and we knew. And I wasn't sure how, you know, like how much shark do you need? So to give it a point of difference and trying to elevate it and give it some interest, it was all about the characters and the nuances and their histories and, and how they interacted and, and the conflicts and the dramas within those characters. So it was a lot of work went into that in the script and it was, um, with developing the characters, their bios, their histories, just to really get people to invest into the project and in, and their performances. So yeah, it was it was an enormous amount of work went in there. So I'm really glad that people are are responding to that part of the script, the 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 character part of the script. Yeah, um, I loved the stress points between uh, Benny and Joji, and I loved oh, awesome. the connection created between Kaz and Charlie. And um, I just oh. thought that for me was a real big highlight. Um, while I was watching the film. 
Awesome. That's exactly what I was going for. And I was hoping I'd get those responses from people, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, and I'm a closet fan of, um, of, uh, uh, Bowden as well. So, oh, Michael Bowden, yeah, he's amazing. Um, yeah. He's, uh, you know, he's no, he's producing. He's done some incredible um, films. Uh, the the remake of Storm Boy, the Tomorrow When the War Began, The Killer Elite. It's just a great um, collection of films. So, very mm. very nice guy. Very knowledgeable. Mm, they all did a really good job, um, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I asked a couple of my Mother of Movies subscribers to ask a question, um, and yeah. one of my favourites, Katie, she asked, how difficult was it filming underwater, and is the camera housed in some kind of plastic case? Yeah, it's extremely difficult because you've got claustrophobic scenarios, so, you know, often, the, you know, the actors have to hold their breath, so you, you can only shoot as long as they hold their breath. Um, and then you have divers around them. So it's really quite tough and really quite demanding and scary on the actors. And then, yes, when you have those cameras underwater, they have to be in underwater housing. So the time it takes to, if you want to change a lens, for example, you've got to take the camera up, you've got to um, take off the housing, put the new lens on. It's very time-consuming. Also, if, you know, like often things go wrong with the camera underwater. So if it comes up and it, and it breaks down, then you have to wait till it, it, it rolls again. So there's so many complexities. Um, yeah, it's a really good question. <laughs> um, she'll be happy that it's been answered. Yeah. Thanks for that. Um, I read that you've written a number of screenplays. I think uh, Wolf, Force, Wolf Force One was a title that I saw that's been optioned, uh, might be a little bit more ahead now. Um, <laughs> But um, is there anything you can tell me about that or is there any other things in the pipeline that you'd like to talk about? Uh, well, Wolf Force One is, again, like I'm, I'm wanting to go down the creature feature path, is uh, uh, basically werewolves on a plane, but it's it's not it's not a, a piss take at all. It's a very serious sort of, uh, um, you know, action thriller, basically, very similar to The Thing or... Or aliens, so it's a, um, and that is with Michael Bowden as the producer and, and co-writer. Um, so that is a um, a very exciting project that we're developing right now. Um, yeah, I'm really excited by that one. And it um, sounds awesome. Yeah, that's that that could be cool. And then I've got another project I'm doing about the legendary big cat in the southwest of WA, which is a bit like Stand by Me meets The Ghosts in the Darkness. You know the the legend of the the panthers and the cougars that have been let loose into our into our bush and these kids go on a journey to find out whether it's true or not so that's another very exciting project i have so like thylacine type no 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 more like the like a panther or a cougar like because during world war ii when the u.s servicemen were were based in australia they had mascots like cougars and, yeah. and when they had to leave the government said you had to um basically put them down and Instead of doing that, apparently they let them loose into the bush and they've been breeding and, you know, thriving apparently in our, in our bush. So it's all, it's about that sort of, that type of cat. Oh, gosh, I'm not aware of that. I'm going to yeah. have to do some massive gurgling. Yeah. When I, um, Just look I... up this Australian big cat legend and it's a, there's a massive, massive uh, sightings, daily sightings of these, cre these cats out in the bush. Um, it's really cool, uh, fun concept Thanks for your time um marty uh, no worries can't wait to see what you got up your sleeves next thanks vanessa awesome thank you bye all right you guys go back there keep your eyes open you might see a whale or a shark one day i was out of my own one grabbed me from behind luckily it was more of a love bite than a real chop Welcome to Hell's Reef. We made it. Hi! Shark attack. It's got to be out there somewhere. You've got no idea where to look. The chance of finding anything is almost zero. Yeah, we have to try. She could still be alive. We're sinking fast.
us. We're in the current. By morning, we'll be 75 k's from here. Get a mate out? Not sure. What about the rescue boat? The current is running east. We use it to get to the coast. You're kidding. You got a better idea? So do you think it's gone? It's still out there. And it's close. Everyone get out of the water! 